Some time ago I published a video called The Most Underrated Chess Opening about the color system. It got a lot of views and I received a lot of positive feedback from you guys from playing this system and winning games. And based on your feedback, right now I'm ready to present an, a revised and improved version of the same opening where I'm sharing with you the most powerful opening variations, the simplest to learn as well as to answer a few questions that you guys posted. But first of all, what is a color system and why should you play it? It's a really simple opening setup with white, where you start off with the move pawn d4. And the good thing about the color system is that you really don't need to know any opening theory. It's just a setup. Here, after these first opening moves, you play pawn e3, regardless of what black does, you know. Let's say pawn e6, just bishop d3. After c5, you play pawn c3. And that is a setup. It's somewhat similar to the London system, but it's different because the middle game plan is different. And again, like uh, very often I read that you guys in comments say something like, you know, your opening videos are cool, but I can hardly remember all these variations. And that's really not a problem with the call system because it's really simple. That's just a setup. You create this kind of pyramid in the center of the board and then you develop the pieces that way. You castle. Next moves are also standard after knight c6. You play knight to d2. Here, after that, you usually castle, and that is it, right? And then you have usually the same middle game plan to push in the center pawn e4. After some preparation, I'll show you exactly how you can do this efficiently. So that is simple. Also, you secure yourself from any early attacks of your opponents, any opening tricks, traps, whatsoever. You know, currently you're 100% secure. And so these are the advantages of the system. Now, in this position, black usually develop their bishop either to e7 or to d6. And these are the two main sub variations of the call system. We're going to see both of them, and I'm going to recommend you the best way for you to play. Let's start with the move bishop e7. Now, you simply castle, of course, black castle as well. Now, you play queen e2, another standard move, which also helps you to prepare the central advancement pawn e4. And uh, you're waiting for the perfect moment to play this, and as soon as you play pawn e4, that someone transitions into the attack. So from here, the pawn will be ready to go forward to e5, to attack back in the center, but usually to be pushed forward to e5. And somehow your position, which initially looked like you know a little bit passive, turns out to be highly aggressive. And in this position, according to the database, the most played move by black is pawn b6, which makes a lot of sense because black needs to develop this position. Right? Black hopes to just play bishop b7 on the next move and have a standard opening position, but now when this diagonal is weakened, this is a perfect opportunity for you to push in the center with the move pawn e4. And all of a sudden, black is actually in a big trouble. In lots of games, black go down within a couple of moves, really. And I'm not exaggerating. Your main idea is to push e5, and that's the move which, which uh, you're gonna do after virtually any move of black. Unless black captures here, you're gonna push e5. You know, and if black captures here, pawn takes e4, then you recapture, and now your position gets a lot more active. So you've got this open diagonal for your bishop, your knight is now in the middle of the board, puts pressure onto this pawn on c5, puts pressure here, and black really feels uncomfortable. What can black do here? If black just keeps trading, then that really loses the game right away. After a queen e4, that's double attack, queen h7 threatens checkmate, and this knight is going to be lost on the next move. So that's one way for you to win the game easily. All right, let's 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 go a couple moves back. If black, instead of capturing this pawn, says, okay, let me capture this one instead. If black captures here, then there is a very important little nuance. Instead of recapturing right away, you toss in this in-between move pawn e5. And since it pushes this knight back after it goes back, and now only you get back your pawn on d4, you got this space advantage, the pieces here are awkward, the light square bishop is passive, and your position is superior. Going back to this critical position, black probably needs to capture here on e4, even though it helps you to advance your knight and to get a more active position. Now, we know that capturing here is really bad, queen comes here forward, attacking all around, so that's not an option. Therefore, a lot of your opponents will simply play bishop b7. And so far, it looks like black is completely fine, but there is a sudden move which allows you a really powerful attack here in this position, and that is a move knight f to g5. What's the point? Well, that puts pressure onto this square h7, right? And, and you are actually ready for a checkmating attack. Because in the next move, you want to trade here, open up this light square bishop, and together with the knight, they're going to pick up the h7 pawn and deliver checkmate very soon. And this strange move knight f to g5 is actually something that is extremely difficult for black to parry. 
In most games, black here is pawns with pawn to h6, trying to just get rid of this knight. But you don't do that. You take here on f6, bishop takes, and now you play queen e4. The standard tactical idea, just very straightforward checkmate and threat. How can black block this diagonal? Well, the only move is pawn g6. But now you completely destroy black's position with knight takes e6. Destroying the pawn shield around black's king, now queen takes g6, check to the king, threatens queen h7, therefore bishop g7 is forced, but you keep going after the king, queen h7, bishop g6, check, and it's easy to see that black is in big trouble. After king to f6, because king has to keep guarding this bishop, there is no immediate checkmate, but after bishop to h5, Stockfish shows that it's less plus 10 for white here, something like that. You're threatening queen g6 check. I know this bishop is still weak. Bishop takes h6 is coming as well. So that is easily overwhelmingly you know, difficult for black. For example, after 97 in one game, white just captured here. Black defended, white played a 4, a queen d5, bishop g5, and black resigned because you know it's nearly checkmate. All right, let's come back to the you know st starring position of the Kali system. Why just put up this pyramid of pawns and started developing pieces as usual. We just analyzed what if black goes bishop e7. The second option is bishop d6, which also makes sense developing a bishop still preparing to castle. And right now you castle, black does the same. And after that I have actually that older video where I've shown some really interesting variations in this position and definitely you may check this out later if you plan playing this opening. But right now I've also noticed that the drawback of the standard move queen e2 is that black can respond with pawn e5 in this position thanks to the bishop from d6 controlling this square. And that leads to mass massive exchanges and equal position. There's nothing wrong with that, but still playing with white you want to get an advantage. You don't want just an equal position. And for that reason, instead of queen e2, I recommend that you play another move. And that move is pawn take c5 first. In fact, if you look at this position, you can easily see that you're kind of playing the slab defense with reverse color, with white, with an extra tempo. And in the slab defense, this maneuver pawn takes c5 first, and only then pawn e4 is a very standard thing to do. And that's what I recommend that you play here with white with an extra tempo. Now, still thanks to this pawn e4, black somewhat feels uncomfortable. This pawn potentially is ready to go forward or maybe to take here on d5, but you can also keep up the pressure and just play your standard move queen e2, and after that to decide what to do next. Perhaps you want to keep pushing the pawn forward and drive this knight away. I've just checked the database of games. In majority of games, black simply took here on e4. I've noticed that usually when people have an opportunity to trade and they aren't sure what to do, they usually do exchange. Now you take here knight takes e4, the knight comes out, attacks this bishop, attacks this knight, therefore black keeps trading, bishop takes e4, and as you look at this position, you can already see that white is somewhat gained the upper hand. You have these open diagonals for your bishops, you know, the centralized bishop is also very strong, you know, attacks all around. And black has some problems with development of their queen side pieces. You have somewhat more space and easy development. Again, in most cases, black here is unsure what to do and simply trades here on d1, which only helps you to put your rook on a central file. Now, still, the problem for black is how to, to develop this bishop. It can't go here because in that case it will just be captured. Therefore, black plays rook d8 to prepare this development. You also play a developing move bishop f4, bringing your bishop out, and now after they go bishop d7 and it's the most played move in this position, that is a hooray moment for you because you've got bishop c7. And this thing basically refutes entire black's set plan. Now you're attacking this rook and the rook cannot go away because in that case they'll lose the bishop. Therefore, in any case, black is going to have some massive material deficit on the next move and you just win. And even if black finds a better way to develop uh, you know, their pieces and, and not to be trapped like that, you're still having a more active position and a good game. And let me address the final common question that people ask me that in this position, if black instead of playing symmetric move pawn e6, what if black goes bishop g4? Does it refute the white setup? Well, there can be no refutation to white's moves because they are very standard, very solid opening moves. So that's another advantage of this opening system uh, overall. You know, you're not compromising your position anyway. There cannot be any refutation once again. And if they play bishop g4, indeed it changes your plans. Now this pin is a little bit annoying. And what you do is you go after this bishop right away. Instead of being an attacking piece, it actually gets under the fire of your pieces. You play pawn h3 first, 
pushing this bishop back. Then you keep chasing it with pawn to g4, bishop goes back to g6, and now knight to e5. They keep pressuring the bishop, and your main idea is not even to capture it with a knight, even though it's possible, and it's always good to have two bishops advantage, but your main threat is different. After black plays some move, doesn't really matter, knight d7 or any other move, you play pawn h4, and your intent is not even to exchange the bishop, but to simply win it. You're gonna play pawn h5 and just capture it. And it's not easy for black to stop the simple threat, because what can black do to stop this? If black pushes the pawn h4, h6 or h5, doesn't matter, then, after this exchange on g6, that will completely disrupt black's pawns. Black can't capture by the h-pawn anymore, it's been moved forward, so black has to capture by this pawn, which opens up the king and weakens this diagonal. So now you can play bishop d3, and it actually threatens checkmate in 1, <laughs> funnily enough. And black is already in trouble, in addition to the fact that you have, you know, two bishops in a more active position. So that's probably not the solution for black. And if not h6, then what? To, what should black play? Lots of your opponents will simply trade here on e5, trying to somehow, you know, reduce the pressure, but that is actually a bad mistake, because now this knight is hanging, and after the knight moves, doesn't matter where it goes, you just play h5 and you win a free piece. There is no compensation. The only square for the bishop to go to is e4, but then you play f3, and now it's completely locked, so there is no way to escape anymore, and you just win a piece with no compensation for black, and that's an easily winning position for white. Of course, I'm always curious about your feedback with using these opening weapons. So if you played color system before or, or if you plan to start using it right now, then write it down in the comments below what are your questions or thoughts about this. I'll be happy to follow up. Uh, also, if you haven't watched my introductory video with the main opening ideas, plans and you know tactics for the color system, you may click right here and check it out right now. Also, if you haven't attended my free masterclass, the best way to improve a chess instantly yet, it might be the right time to do that right now. Either way, keep crushing it, have a great rest of the day, talk soon.